Bill Gates began his major philanthropic work 20 years ago when he set up the William H. Gates Foundation focusing on global health. This evening, Bill will be talking about the case for aid in this, the inaugural lecture of the Lord's Speaker series. What I want to focus on today is, is the great opportunity uh, to make the world a better place, the progress we're making and some of the opportunities uh, to accelerate that. Uh, these are causes that uh, my country, the United States, and the United Kingdom are in fact engaged on in, in a very exciting way. In fact, in many ways leading uh, the efforts uh, to improve lives all over the world. Well, this Ebola epidemic uh, is a very scary thing. It's taken thousands of lives directly and indirectly by shutting down uh, the health systems in these countries, uh, it's killed even more. Uh, more women dying in childbirth, or people dying in malaria. Uh, the health systems for all 22 million of the people in the three affected countries really are not operating. Uh, we, we can see here that we all should care about global health. Uh, what happened in Africa is a tragedy, but in this interconnected world, uh, if we don't solve these, these problems, uh, they will spread to many, many countries, uh, particularly to the poorer countries, but uh, all countries are, are at risk. To move on now, let me uh, talk about malaria. Uh, malaria, of course, is, has been around uh, as long as mankind has, uh, and it's another disease uh, that bears disproportionately on the world's poorest. Malaria kills over 600,000 every year, uh, and over two-thirds of those deaths are, are children in Africa. But the burden is even greater uh, than that number would suggest. There's over 200 million cases a year. Uh, for every child who dies, uh, there's at least three uh, kids who've had a form of cerebral malaria uh, that reduces their mental capacity uh, for the rest of their life. Uh, malaria is uh, very tough on pregnant women. In fact, a significant percentage of uh, low birth weight deliveries are because of uh, the high infection rate uh, that exists for malaria in these African countries. And so really, if we want to improve health substantially, uh, we have got to solve malaria. We've got to reduce the malaria map uh, country by country and have uh, within a generation a goal of total eradication. Uh, we're increasing our malaria budget uh, over 30 percent uh, because of, of this commitment. Uh, and uh, the British government, along with the U.S., have, have been the, the biggest partners uh, that have really made long-term commitments that will help us uh, win this battle. The, if we don't stay vigilant, a negative scenario where the deaths go back up uh, is not impossible. Uh, we've got to renew the drugs, we've got to renew the bed nets, and the UK commitment, uh, which was, I believe, 500 million pounds a year, uh, really made a huge difference. You know, when you think about researchers, they want to know that if they invent something, it will be taken through trials and that there'll be uptake for it to be bought. And so a lot of global health innovation is sitting in the lab, but people think, oh, there wouldn't be any funding for that. Uh, and so with malaria, uh, people saw that you know, the world was really stepping up in a big way. You know, basically, my, my view would be that uh, uh, that level of funding uh, ideally would be maintained until we get disease eradication. Uh, and and you know, we're careful not to suggest to people that's an overnight thing. Uh, you know, within 20 to 25 years, it's absolutely doable, and there'll be some amazing milestones along the way in terms of getting deaths down, avoiding drug resistance, uh, uh, which is the, the big bugaboo uh, that has actually been the reason why, if you look at that death chart, there are two huge upswings as we let drug resistance uh, sweep the world, first with chloroquine and then, then with SP. So uh, that UK commitment really is, is, has been vital. That, the US and the UK, uh, and, and the Global Fund, which, of course, the U.S. and U.K. are big givers to, but others as well. Those are the three biggest funders of uh, getting interventions out into the, uh, the, the poor countries. Now, my love of vaccines goes back uh, to the early commitment to, the, to form 
uh, the foundation. Uh, one of the big investments we made to make sure new vaccines would get out to small children was an alliance called the GAVI, the Global Alliance for Vaccines. Uh, and it's a public-private partnership that's done a great job of making sure the very latest vaccines uh, are made available to the poor. Historically, it's been over 20 years between vaccines would be used in the rich world, where actually the risk of disease is far, far less, and then it would trickle down over a long period of time and get out to where uh, the risk was highest. With Gavi, the idea is, is to, in less than five years, make sure uh, the kids at risk get these vaccines, and so some like pentavalent, uh, the rotavirus vaccine, and the pneumococcus vaccine, we're moving uh, to have full coverage. In fact, by 2020, uh, we should have full coverage of all the world's children uh, with those vaccines. Uh, by getting these new vaccines out, uh, we've already uh, saved over six million lives. Uh, and this is a, a partnership uh, that the, uh, the UK and our foundation are the uh, biggest funders of. Uh, we're working now on uh, the, the pledging conference that starts next year. We're drawing in other partners. We expect to raise even more money for this because actually if you look at all the investments and development uh, buying these vaccines is one of the most impactful things that can be done. It really is fantastic, not only in reducing deaths, uh, but helping the kids to survive be far healthier. Uh, and when parents have healthy kids, we've seen uh, that they choose uh, not to have uh, as many children, which means that uh, the population growth in the poor areas will actually come down to a level that challenges like feeding everyone, educating everyone will become uh, far more tractable. So it's a uh, very exciting time uh, for this idea of uh, new vaccines getting out to all the children of the world. When we look at, at the goal of, of aid, it's really about uh, treating lives equally. Uh, it's about helping countries get to a level of self-sufficiency. And historically, many countries that were aid recipients, uh, South Korea, uh, Botswana, Morocco, Brazil, Malaysia, many of what we now call middle-income countries that are not aid recipients are completely self-sufficient. Uh, I think over time, you know, we can get all countries there. In fact, uh, all but very few, we should be able to get there uh, between now and, and 2030. So I want to thank all of you for your support uh, for uh, research and aid generosity. Uh, the UK really is an exemplar in terms of uh, the generosity it's provided. And I want to challenge all of us to think about how we can do even more uh, and accelerate the progress we've made uh, and, and achieve the equity uh, that I'm sure we all believe in. Thank you so much. Really, thank you so much. I think it's incredibly important that we're all reminded um, quite regularly that aid actually works and that the results are irrefutable.